Okay. Let's let's move on. Okay. So what just happened? Okay. So, uh wouldn't it be true? Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yes, it would be true. Um, yeah, because uh, basically, like I said, this all, all of this is one expression, and then you have or, and you have true. So whenever you have true and or, this is true. So yeah, you're right. Good job. So you're 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 already ahead of the game. Okay. So what happens here? Now, uh, yeah, these are called, this is control statements, usually if is, if and else statements are control statements. So basically what happens is, um, you know, if the expression inside these uh, parentheses is is true, you know, here, here it is just, it, this is true, right, it's just true. Um, and then you put a colon, you have, this is, this is important, you have to put, you put the colon, and then you put a tab, and then you say uh, whatever you want to do, right? Um, this could be whatever. It doesn't matter. And then else is like, basically, if this statement didn't evaluate, you jump to else. And then you would print goodbye world. So this was this is obviously going to print hello world, right? And this is not going to get evaluated. The other thing I wanted to mention, too, is say you have like, say you have something like this. Oh, wait, let me go like that. And then, um, I don't know. Okay, now, if like, if, if you just have this, and this part like isn't true, which like here it isn't, um, this statement just totally gets skipped. And because you, like the else clause is optional, okay? Um, so, you don't need to have an else clause here, this will evaluate, like this, the computer will say this is false, so I'm not going to do this. So that's important too, like this, nothing is going to, this is totally going to do nothing right here. I'm just gonna skip over to here, right? That's kind of important too. You might want to like that might that might be uh, important or or whatever, depending on what you're doing. So let's let's just try to run that and see what happens. We should just get uh, hello world, right? Hello world, okay. Um, yeah, easy. <laughs> yes, uh, okay. So now what is going on here so i said x is equal to one so we had this earlier right this is just a variable x is equal to one no problem and you know i said if x is equal to two you print high um x is equal to one if x is equal to two print high this means uh else if okay in python you write it l if whatever and that's just the syntax and um maybe note that also like so basically like under the if this is indented and um you can have like you know you can have like another one of these that's also indented or whatever it doesn't matter um whenever you and then when you unindent that's when the next statement starts so this is all part of like a chain right here basically like this whole thing um the if goes through the computer is like is x2 and then if it is i'm going to do this stuff and i'm going to skip the rest right but in this case, x is 1, so this is going to get skipped. This else if, so first you go to if, then you go to else if. And you can have multiple else ifs. Else is always like the default case, basically. Whenever you enter the if and like the whole chain, like nothing in the chain gets evaluated, you just jump to the else. The else is optional, by the way, too. You don't need to have the else there. You could end it with the else ifs. And if nothing satisfies any of your um, statements there, like any of your tests, then none of those statements are going to get executed. So what happens here, so like, okay, x is not 2, skip this, go to here, x is not 3, skip this, and then land in our default case, which is good afternoon, for whatever reason, okay? Um, let's just see what that looks like here. Good afternoon, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, you know, speak up if it doesn't, that's what I have to say. Um, okay, so now what do we got here? So now this is a uh, a for loop, okay? And let me just get back over here, okay? So now this is saying, you know, putting x in like for x, it's 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 pretty like it's it's pretty much like like English, right? For x in this range, okay? Um, print x. So what is this? Range one through five. What happens here is that Python evaluates this as like start with one 
and go up through four and don't include the five. Don't include the upper bound and include the smaller bound, okay? So, um, yeah, so it's just going to go, this is, what's going to happen is this. So X is going to be, uh, you know, X is going to start as one and it's going to print X. And then you're going to come back up here and now X is going to be in, X is going to be the value two. And it's going to be, you know, the computer's going to check basically like smaller than five. So it's going to keep going, print two, then three, print three, then four, print four. And then when it's five, it's like, okay, it's no longer in this range because the way Python does it is this is the upper bound is not included. Okay. Lower bound included, upper bound not included. Just remember that. Okay. So uh, let's go to the next one. So, so you can also do this. So this is four X in range five. So this basically go starts from zero just because you know I, I wrote yeah computer scientists uh, count with zero first basically this prints uh, zero to four I guess we didn't we didn't print the earlier one but you can take my word on it or we can do it but basically there you go uh, zero one two three four also um, one thing to note too is whenever you print in Python it automatically gives you a new line so that, that's something else to, to note so that's why it, that's why all these numbers on a, on a new line right there this is this is absolutely great. So, um, yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I, I really like it. This is cool. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So let, let's see. Let, let's continue now. Um, so we got, we are here. So this co I've just been getting, I'm just confusing myself with these comments, but okay. Okay. Here we go. So now we have four X in range 10, right? And we're printing, uh, X times two. So you actually, you brought up a good point earlier. Um, about like for I like say you actually had for I in range blah blah, blah and you printed X times two now the thing is like you're gonna like I don't remember what X was X is probably actually X, X is probably like six or something but it now we commented stuff out so X is X is probably gonna be like no X is probably not gonna have a value right now but if I had like if I had up yeah, here because we commented it out if sure. I had if I had like X is equal to like three or something now we're gonna print like for now we're, like ten times we're gonna print six, right? So yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, good, good. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll let's uh let's let's go through this. So so basically, what do, what do you think this is gonna print? This this for statement here, for x in range ten, print x times two. For x in range ten, print x times two. Mm -hmm. Um. I would say so. For I, I my gut says like one for the integers one through nine, it's yeah. going to double it by two. Yes. Like so, we'll get nine integers times two. So we'll start with two and we'll end at eighteen. Yeah, but but we just set up here that this prints. Zero through four, right? Because computer scientists count with zero first. Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. so so you're, just, you're you're right, but you're just gonna have a zero as well. So we we will actually have ten numbers, but yeah, it it will end at eighteen, and let's uh let's just make sure that's the case. Okay. There we go. Yeah, zero through uh eighteen. Okay. All right. Now this one is so so these uh these double asterisks over here. This is how you uh exponentiate. So, um, you know, Python is pretty nice about this. Like other, other programming languages might have you have like a different package or something, like usually like a math package or whatever to do exponents, but it's pretty, it's just native. It's just two multiplication symbols. So this is just uh, three to the three, right? I feel like that doesn't need any explanation. We can test it and we get 27 and that's fine. Three times three is nine, nine times three is 27, okay? Um, and then, um, and then, like, I don't know, for whatever reason, I just, I just had, a, I had another example. Uh, 27 times 3, I believe it's 81. If my uh, arithmetic is on point, uh, we, and we can test. Yeah, I, I, that should be 81. Yeah, it is. It is 81. Okay, good. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's that. And now we're moving over into uh, while loops. So, you know, we have four, I think... I think probably there is a do while loop in Python as well. I didn't include it though. Basically what, um, okay, so, so four is just kind of like, you know, for a specified interval or whatever, like four X in range or whatever, right? And now while is like, while you have a Boolean value that evaluates to true. So here I have X is 15 
and I'm saying while it's greater than 10, right? So I'm doing stuff, and then importantly, I'm subtracting 1 from x, as we saw earlier, right? This is how we do subtraction. Well, maybe you didn't see earlier, but like we talked about this earlier. This is, this is just saying x is uh, x minus 1, so it's just subtracting 1 from x and assigning it back to x. Um, the other thing, so I'll, I'll repeat this just, just, just for uh, sake of clarity, is that um, you see that x appears on two sides of this equation, which kind of looks a little bit weird. Basically what happens is this is just an assignment operator, this equals, and it's just saying that like assign x the value of what x previously was, which here is 15, and uh, minus by 1. And then also like when you have the indented stuff, everything happens um, in this while loop that's indented. So everything that's indented gets looped, basically. So basically what's going to happen here is you have x is going to be 15, and the first in the first iteration, uh, x is 15 here, and it's greater than 10, so you're going to print out 15, and then you're going to subtract by 1, and you're going to skip back up to this while, and x is going to be 14 now, and that's still greater than 10, so you're going to continue. All right? Um, so... Basically, you're going to go, you're going to print 15 through uh, until 11, and then once x is 11 here, you print out 11, and then x becomes 10 right here, and then you're going to come back here and you're going to say, well, x is not greater than 10 because x is equal to 10, right? So you're going to stop there. So 15 through 11 is what we should see, and uh, let's just test it real quick, and there we go, 15 through 11. All right. Um, okay, but yeah, so... Like, the do while loop is basically the same thing as this, except for whatever is in the do is going to be uh, done, like, once, like, always, no matter what. And then the while condition is at the very bottom. And so it's basically going to do it, do the loop one time, no matter what, and then it's going to check the while condition and then proceed exactly like uh, this while loop. That's, so, you know, it's not really necessary. You can just, to simulate that, you could just write, like, whatever you wanted the do part of the loop to do, like just write that above the loop. And then that will execute and then you'll go into the while loop. And it's the same thing. So it's just, you know, easier to do it this way, I think. And I've n I honestly have never used while loops at all. I mean, do while loops at all. Like I usually use while or for, and then you can do the same thing as a do while. Yeah, the funny thing about like, I mean, you can do, a f I've, the only time I ever used a while loop was when I was first learning about loops in general. Yeah, and for some reason, while when I come across code, I see a lot of for loops that essentially say, "If this condition, then do this." Right. Else. Yeah. Well, else usually it's usually else like don't do the whatever's in the loop. But yeah, yeah, exactly. I think you can you can basically write uh, equivalences of like both. You could write a for loop as a while loop or a while loop as a for loop. Sometimes it's a little bit more natural and we will we will get back to that. We will get back to when you might use a while instead of a for loop. 